Hi, I'm Graham and welcome to my workshop and to this video, part six in the series of a journey into joinery, nearly said it wrong again, where I'm going to be cutting a bridal joint. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos in this series, I recommend that you do as it'll set the context for everything that I'm doing and explain why I'm doing it. Keeping the format as promised, I have the tools that I'm going to use laid out in front of me. My Japanese hand saws, mallet, marking gauge, not a mortise gauge, come back to that. Coping saw, squares, chisels, knife pencil and a tape measure. The marking gauge. I'm using a marking gauge because my mortise gauge is um, not fit for use anymore. It seems to have got a little damp somewhere along the lines and has swelled so I'm unable to use it. Anyway the marking gauge will do us just fine. My chisels are freshly sharpened using my Shapton ceramic stones. If you haven't seen that video I'll put a link to that up as well and down below in the description and as per uh, format I'll leave links to places where you may buy any of the tools that I use should you want to in the description below. So without further ado, let's bring you in closer and we'll start marking out the bridal joint. So I have two pieces of scrap that I've machined down and I'm going to join them like so. I'm going to start by marking the width of each on the other. And then I'm going to square round with my knife and my square after I've decided which is face side and face edge. And that looks fine to me. And that looks fine to me. Those two marks are going to be critically important when we come to use the marking gauge. So I'll square these round a tick. So when my timber is squared all round, I now need to decide on the width of my tenon and mortise. So my pieces are all but 30 mil. They're a nads over 30 mil. For anybody that's not familiar with the term nads, it means a small, tiny, teeny weeny bit. I'm not sure if it's a Cornish word or not, but it's one of my favorites and nads over 30 so I'm going to go for a 10 mil tenon so I'm going to mark on this piece 10 mil and then I'm going to set my mortise gauge off my face side To 10 mil that's a bit over mortise gauge I did call it a mortise gauge didn't I I'm most frightfully sorry marking gauge so I'm now going to mark all the way around this piece and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side making sure to reference off my face Okay, so I've done that right side on both pieces. Now I can adjust my marking gauge to the far side and do the same. By doing it this way, if I've got my marking gauge slightly out, it doesn't matter because it's going to be slightly out on both pieces. It's 
with my joint all laid out I'm just going to run a pencil mark up those lines to make it easier for me to see and finally I need to decide which is going to be the tenon and which is going to be the mortise doesn't really matter so let's have this as the mortise so I'll mark the middle bit for removal and we'll have this as the tenon and now I'm ready to cut so as you've no doubt noticed I have my piece on an angle in the vise and that's so that I can focus on just the two lines that I can easily see. If I set it verticalized, then I've got three axes to worry about. So doing it like that <clears throat> makes it much easier. I'm going to cut slightly wide because I'm more confident with my chiseling than I am with my sawing. Do the same on the other side. Now we can straighten it up and cut out the triangle that was left in the middle. piece to chisel out. So I've got my piece firmly clasped in the vise and as you can see I've got quite a healthy amount of waste there so I'm going to take out about half take out that last bit there's hardly any resistance from the little bit of wood that's left and my chisel can follow the line left by the marker gauge and once again very little left So now I'm going to start cutting out the cheek of the tenon and all I'm going to do is just reinforce that line a little. I'll do the same on this side. same on the edge now I'm going to cut down reasonable amount so I know I'm clear of that also precious edge
So now I'm just going to pair in using that cut that I've already made on all three sides to get rid of the waste material from the middle. Clean up that corner. So as before, I'm going to take out about half of the waste each time. The tiniest amount left. And I can just pair down. Half again. And finally back to the light. Now, as before, we'll just clean out the cheeks. I think this is always the more difficult part of the joint to do because you've got that other side see if the bottom's level. Now, can we see that? There's a bit of a rock there. Yeah. So I just need to clean out a bit more. And that's good. Well, it's time for the first test fit. And see what we've got. Quite pleased with that, I must say. I'll zoom you in a bit. Very nice indeed. the bridle joint. Well that brings part six of A Journey Into Joinery to a close with the completion of my bridle joint. And I'm sure you've guessed that this is the forerunner to a full-blown mortis and tenon. Well, kind of. So I suggest you stick around because the next video might take you by surprise. So hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and see you next time. Ta-ra.